to have you with us this morning. Welcome into First Take. Molly Karam here with you, holding things down in Bristol solo. Skip Bayless joins us from New York City. Stephen A is in Cleveland. Hello, gentlemen. What's up? What's up? Good morning. How y'all doing? I, I think it is a great day. I had a great day watching pro football yesterday, especially that 430 game. Mm. You, you two might be somewhat aware of it. Well, I know you didn't say anything about the one o'clock game, but I certainly did. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Of course you did. Let's talk about that one and get right into it. Patriots Giants never disappoints. Well, disappointed me. The Pats, Steven Goskowski made his 30th straight field goal so clutch, especially last night, making a 54 yarder with one second remaining, keeping the Patriots unbeaten with a 27 to 26 victory over the New York football Giants. Stephen A, did New England win or did New York lose? Um. To be quite honest with you, I thought the New York Giants lost the game. Um, I'm not trying to take anything away from the Patriots because they're undefeated. Uh, they're clearly the best team in football right now, although there are those who would give that edge to Cincinnati. I don't know why. They need to win a playoff game and show me something beyond the regular season for me to give them that, those kind of props. So I would give it to New England right now. And as far as I'm concerned, there's no question in my mind. But when you look at the myriad mm -hmm. of mistakes that the New York Giants made uh, yesterday afternoon, I don't think there's any question uh, that it comes down to the Giants having gave this football game away. Uh, certainly when you look at Landon Collins and dropping that interception of Brady, that definitely was a problem. You look at the drop, uh, you look at the uh, Odell Beckham Jr. touchdown and how he came down with the second foot, but you got to hold on to that football. That didn't happen, okay? You look at the situation where, yeah, that was a, that was a, 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 a beautiful uh, throw from Brady to Amendola on a fourth and ten, but damn it, it was fourth and ten. And if you're the New York Giants and you've got the game on the line, you simply can't allow that to happen, particularly when you played the kind of game that you played. And even as we show the highlights of the previous inter interception that I made, that was not. Your Collins, you got to hold down. The, you got to hold on to the football. You know good and well that you're going to come down on that hard turf. You know it's going to hurt. But before you sit up there and, 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 and you know, you just let go of the ball, you got to hold on and cradle that football and just fall and take the shot that you know is inevitably coming instead of trying to catch it with one hand. I mean, that was just ill-advised as far as I'm concerned. Then when you take into account history, Think about the brain lock that the Giants suffered against the Cowboys in week one. Think about the mistakes they made in losing a fourth quarter lead to the Falcons in game two. Think about some of the things they've done already this year. Think about the mistakes that they made against New Orleans in the process of giving up 52 points and seven touchdown passes to Drew Brees. There, that, that was still a winnable game for them, and somehow, some way, they blew it. This is a team, the New York Giants, easily, easily, could have been right now eight and two instead of five and five. But there were at least three games, arguably four, that they have absolutely positively blown. If this was one game, then you'd give even more credit to the New England Patriots. But the fact that this has happened to the Giants in some way, shape, form, or fashion over and over and over again this season shows a pattern. And the pattern is when the game wanes and stuff gets tight their palms get sweaty they don't seem to be who they're supposed to be and when you're going up against new england you can't afford for that to happen the giants blew this game yesterday but obviously you give credit and props uh, to new england because brady is brady you know what you just made a whole lot of decent points that amount to nothing to just a big old hill of beans because the final score was Patriots by one point. I told you it would be Patriots by one point. You did. And glory be, all I care about, all I care about is Tom Brady beat Eli Manning by one point. I don't care if it was by a half a point or a third of a point or a quarter of a point. The Patriots won. Brady finally beat the Eli curse late in the game. I don't care how it happened, why it happened, all the spilled milk that you talk about, it's all water and milk under the bridge for me because I walked away with a one-point win for my guy, Tom Brady. And I agree with you, Stephen A. My guy, Tom Brady, was a little lucky. Maybe he was a lot lucky in the fourth quarter. In fact, 
he put himself in position to create four turnovers for the New York football Giants, who I remind you, as I, bo I told both of you on Friday, the Giants led the league in takeaways coming into that game. The, the, the Giants had the league-leading turnover differential coming into that game. So the balls were in their hands. Landon Collins, you're right. He should have hung on. Game would have been over. Brady lost one fumble, could have lost another one. Giants couldn't recover. Patriots did recover. Obviously, Brady threw the, the interception. It was a bad throw, a little late to LaFell. It almost looked like a Malcolm Butler-style interception at the goal line. It looked like it might cost the Patriots, but it did not because Tom Brady got the ball back with one minute and 47 seconds to go. Now, should your Giants have just given in to the situation, first and goal at the five, with, what was it, 205 left in the game, and run, 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 and just kick the field goal and let the clock run a little bit more? They could have. They could have run the clock down to instead of 147, I don't know, maybe 115 or 120 when Brady got the ball back. But you know what? I admired Tom Coughlin for saying, let's go for the kill. Let's make Tom Brady have to go the length of the field for a touchdown instead of just a field goal. And listen, Eli made the throw, as you point out to, to Beckham. It's in his hands. It's a sweet throw. And Malcolm Butler, who I thought played the game of his life, knocked the ball out of Odell Beckham Jr.'s hands. It was a great play by the cornerback and, and not a bad play by the quarterback or the receiver to me. It was just a great play by the cornerback. And then Eli missed Odell. He came open on the second goal play, wide open for a touchdown, and he missed it. He just didn't see him, threw it quickly outside to Dwayne, Dwayne Harris and just made a bad choice. Then he made a good choice to stay in bounds when he rolled out on third down to run a little bit more clock. But again, they went for the kill, and they didn't kill Tom Brady because he's hard to kill late in the game. And I got to tell you, Brady was all-time clutch, and so was Danny Amendola. He had a partner in clutch time, did Tom Brady. Amendola caught the fourth and ten play that you're talking about. I know the Giants should have covered it better, but he hung on for 12 yards. Then he hung on for 11 yards more. And on the key play of the game, the little sweet spin that he made out of a couple of tackles to get about five or six more yards to set up the 54-yard field goal to win it. Clutch, clutch, clutch. It just felt to me like this year, this time, this is Tom Brady's year. This is the year of Brady as he tries to deflate every opponent to get even with the NFL for deflate gate. If you put the ball in his hands this year, this time against Eli, that was the outcome. I loved it because I thought justice prevailed in the end. Thank you very much. Well, I will tell you this. I love how you say it's much ado about nothing at all that matters is the outcome because I can point to a myriad of dis discussions that we've had, you know, covering and spanning a multitude of subjects where all that mattered was not the final score to you. So I'm glad you brought that up because I certainly will remember it with future topics to come. I can promise you that. You won't get away with that. But in this particular instance, we both the Patriots to win, but you were right on the money. You picked them to win 29 to 28, so you almost had the score right down to the number. So I give you major props for that. But Thank it's you. also, but it's also, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not you. I'm not shy about giving you props when it's deserved. It's just mm. that it's really deserved. But let's mm. get back to the issue at hand. When we talk about the start of the fourth quarter, Giants recover a Brady fumble. You're on New England's 31 yard line. You don't score a single point. That's pretty nope. damn pathetic. And when you look at it from that perspective, you just find yourself looking at the New York Giants and it's flabbergasting as to why they will come up with, with these mistakes, particularly at the most inopportune of times. But I would like to remind you of this. You know, it's not the first time Brady has beaten Eli Manning in the regular season. A matter of fact, it's, it's, it's a pretty recurring role for him where he has a problem beating pay, uh, Eli Manning rather is in the Super Bowl. That's where he has a problem. So just keep that in mind, you know, as we move forward. Not that I'm projecting that the Giants will go to the Super Bowl because I certainly can't see that happening. But in the event that they luck up again, because they did have a 9-7 record when they went to the Super Bowl one of those years and they beat Brady, just keep in mind those little tidbit of facts. It might have actually been better, Skip, mm -hmm. for you if Brady had lost yesterday, just in case they meet them in the Super Bowl. The fact that they won yesterday, the likelihood is that if they were to meet again, it wouldn't happen twice. Just want to point that out. Nope. 
Uh, I want to point out the last time that these two met in the regular season was in Foxborough. Remember that? About five seasons well, they ago. Won that, I the Giants won that game, though. I think the Giants right? won that game, yeah. 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 yeah, Giants won that game on a late Eli touchdown pass. It was only one yard to Jake Ballard, but still, Eli trumped Brady in that game. So it was three in a row late, Eli trumping Brady, out Bradying Brady. That's why this was so huge psychologically to Brady. And by the way, if we want to speak of luck, how lucky were your Giants that Julian Edelman, Brady's obvious favorite receiver, his most trusted foot, yeah. receiver, the, the best rapport, he's gone after one quarter. Are you kidding me? That's a huge break for the New York Giants. And how about Deion Lewis, who is the new Shane Vereen? I think he's even better than Shane Vereen. Obviously, this is the first game they had to play without poor little Deion, who's gone for the season. And by the way, Shane Vereen is still alive and very well and kicking for the New York Giants and, and played a role yesterday. So again, that was advantage Giants. Jamie Collins, the best playmaker on New England's defense, could not go yesterday. So that was advantage Giants. And I'm gonna say it one more time. Tom Brady continues to operate behind the most decimated, inexperienced offensive line in all of pro football and keeps getting away with it, keeps surviving. That's advantage Giants. I'm sorry, I think there was a lot of luck going the other way too. Okay, that's fair enough. That's fair. Thank you. All right. It might be Brady's Peyton's year, woes. but it certainly wasn't the Manning's day. We'll get into Peyton's woes in just a minute. And more bad news for the Giants as Victor Cruz is officially done for the season, having surgery on ah. his last left calf. Obviously, they also lost their center in that game as well. 